Okay. So you want to learn the Hollowed Sepulchre, because Raids 3 is coming out. Cool. Terrible at explaining mechanics, but I'll show you how I run it. Uh, Meshable Drops, if you care about that sort of thing, or the Ring of Endurance from the final floor. Requirements are 92 Agility to even access this floor with a rate of 1 in 200. The other mentionable drops are the strange lockpicks used in tandem with the Barrows Brothers to access any door within the crypts. The only other item to know is, of course, uh, our good old Hello Marks. These puppies recolor your graceful to a black and looks pretty nice. Uh, peep the photo here. Other uses for Hollow Marks are to make the minigame agility training a bit easier. This will include the Hollow Grappling Hook, which uh, will always make you succeed a grappling point within the minigame. The Hollow Focus will always make you succeed in conjuring portal frames. The Hollow Symbol. When equipped, it will have the number of vampiric ashes when used on Ceridoman altars. Hollowed Hammer, uh, this this is pretty good if you uh, want to repair the broken bridges, it will never break a nail. Hollowed Ring, this is a super good item. I'd recommend this probably first because it will help you save a bunch of time learning additional obstacles the further you get. Um, but what it does is it takes, uh, it makes you take no damage if you fail a trap or an obstacle. It will also save time when putting you back at the nearest checkpoint. The other mentionables are obviously Dark Die for the Graceful, and the Dark Acorn is for the Agility Pet Recolor. I'm still hunting it, so good luck to you. There's another item on the list called a Hollowed Sack, but I don't recommend really buying these until you have every item that makes the minigame a bit easier. Now, into the guide. Feel free to pause the video at any moment to focus on each floor you're struggling on, as I will do a commentary over what I'll be doing, why I'm doing it, just to show you my whole process. Note that this guide is not the most efficient possible. Uh, this is just how I have self-taught myself, and um, this is the easiest way for me to explain it, as it was a lot of fun for me to even learn on my own. So hopefully this guide's helpful. Uh, thanks for even watching, and hope you guys have a good rest of your day. So I totally forgot to do this, but... Um, if you'd like to see what items I bring um, whenever I recommend somebody to start running the Sepulchre, uh, keep in mind I don't have Vampire Caches in the inventory, but this is what it should look like. Along with, this is what my equipped items also look like. Full Graceful, uh, Cape of your choosing. Make sure that you do, if you don't have any hollowed items, that you do bring any type of Ceridoman item as it will give you access to restore your run energy at the end of every room. Okay, so we have our floor one start, which is going to be a pretty simple floor. It's nothing crazy. Uh, everything within this floor is pretty manageable. There's, if, uh, if you're failing on floor one like I usually do, <laughs> uh, you know, it's just a matter of trial and error as a fail right there. Feels great. Um. I'll just let this clip roll out as this floor is pretty simple. Usually a good rule of thumb is on those blades. You always want to either um, run the moment it gets back or run the moment it's sent out. There it is for uh, floor one completion, pretty easy. Now, this is all live commentary, by the way, so I'm just going to try to explain what I'm doing um, throughout the entire throughout the entire floor. This is floor two, obviously. Um, a good, helpful plug-in that would help with uh, dodging things and knowing how movement works is uh, the Tile Indicator plug-in. It is um, it's under Tile Indicator, um, but floor two, pretty simple as well. Um, it's pretty much the same as floor one. There shouldn't be really any issues that you'll have with the floor. Uh, again, this is the uh, most simple thing. Obviously, you dodge the arrows and the blades and the portals, and you want to make sure that you're always uh, prioritizing moving side to side horizontally rather than uh, diagonally. Um, you will see a few times where I go diagonal and um, it's just because I know the timings. Obviously, there's a fail there. Um, but, uh, this is, uh, floor three. Uh, now these start tiles up here, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and pause. These start tiles up here, pretty much it's where, uh, you'll see right now where there is, 
uh, the closest statue to you on the left will be showing you uh, that it's going to shoot out fire. The start one is for that specific tile. The moment the fire goes down, if you can do a tick perfectly, you can run through the entire thing. I think even you do have like a tick delay uh, as well in order to run the entire obstacle. Super duper easy. I'll just let it play out. So flame there, and you can just click once, once the flame goes down and run the entire obstacle. You don't have to stall or anything. Uh, this one, a little more complicated. You just start. Once the blade came back, I ran forward. I got hit by the portal twice, which gave me invincibility frames in order to run through. Uh, this next obstacle is just dodging. Super duper simple. Again, make sure that you're always doing horizontal movements rather than diagonal. Uh, the blade just got sent out so I can run and make sure that I get there in time uh, for, this to, for this to work out. This next spot, uh, it's kind of kind of hard to explain but pretty much you want to line yourself and watch the statues behind you and if you have a clear path you can run the entire first section in one click um, same thing there I just centered myself with these two and ran the entire obstacle um, if you can do that you can get through that pretty easily um, there is obviously you can take your time you can pace and everything which is fine but um, again I'm, I'm pausing the video but yeah, it shouldn't be that difficult for that one. Um, as long as you can get behind, watching behind you first. And if you click through the whole obstacle once the flames go down, you don't have to be tick perfect. It's no issue. As long as you have a good reaction speed, you should be okay. Um, but running through the first of them makes it to where you negate the entire worry of even spacing yourself with flames. So if that helps, it helps. Um... The next one is, uh, this is floor four. Uh, the reason I have these tiles marked is because um, you can walk through the lightning very easily if you just click once to where that tile marker is now that I just landed on, you'll hit, be hit by the first lightning. The blade came back, I used the portal in order to get further into the room. Um, this one's just a matter of dodging. Honestly, with these ones, I would just ignore what the tile floors are gonna do uh, if you're starting to learn. I would just hit whatever you hit and let the portals travel you anywhere, and you'll eventually understand that you can start prioritizing where you're moving rather than why you're moving. Um, obviously, I failed there. I think it was because I had moved diagonally to the left and given myself a little problem. But, uh, like, I'm just clicking just to get through this area. Um, you know, I'm always watching the statues, and I'm just making sure I'm clicking uh, in the direction where I see them go. This one's a little more difficult to explain, because it has, I'm pretty sure, four to five flame rotations on each side. This is where you do have to alternate. Um, with this alternation, uh, or alteration, I should say. Alternation? Alteration. Whichever. Um, you know what I mean. The, uh, the This one's just mainly dodging. Uh, with the... Um, and just making sure that you know tile mechanics. Because uh, you do... Here, I'll pause. You do obviously move two tiles at a time when you're running. Um, so if you do line yourself upright with the lightning on the left or the right side, you can notice how your character can skip um, onto the safe tiles every time and not get hit. I'll explain that further in the fifth floor because the fifth floor is kind of ridiculous sometimes, but um, it can be if, you, if you're not on the right rotation. But uh, this, yeah, again, this is floor four. Uh, this is probably the hardest obstacle of floor four is the blade had just come back. We have like level three arrows going the speed, level three blade going the speed. Once the blade goes out, I start to run. Uh, the only way to pass this obstacle if it's going out is taking a blue portal. So I click on the blue portal there. I have a little tad bit of invincibility, so I'm able to run through the arrows after I pass the blade. Um, again, I get hit by a yellow portal there because I'm not paying attention to what's under me. Um, that is a common thing that you can do within this minigame. You'll have enough time uh, as long as you're just attentive with it. Uh, so we're going into floor five. Floor five is interesting. It's, uh, it's, it's a set amount. It, th this is where I prefer to be tick perfect because if you're not, um, I can't really explain it to you. But you see I started running the moment the flames went down there on the second tile. That's good. Blade's coming back. I'm going to be using a blue portal in order to uh, get further into the room. Because if you don't blue portal twice here, you get hit by the blade every time. As you notice, the blade is already on my ass right there. Which is not good if you don't take both portals. 
Um, a good rule of thumb, if you are on level 5, is that you click, uh, after the blade comes back, you click one of the three blue portals. And what I usually do is I click the middle one if I don't know which one it's going to be. Once I get to that middle blue portal in the beginning, um, I will move to the desired tile, whichever one highlights. That way I'm as close as I can absolutely be in terms of uh, game speed and stuff. So uh, this next one, pretty much it's just dodging, but the, the arrows do come obviously a little bit quicker. Uh, this is just, you know, watching the arrows. I kind of ignore the floor tiles uh, this whole time. Um, I don't really pay attention to, like, where I'm being teleported. I just know that I need to go forward. And I'm just prioritizing dodging the arrows rather than the floor. Uh, so if you can remove that from your head, then great. Uh, this next one is a... Uh, the, the, it may be overwhelming, but it can be uh, easier to... Uh, easier to run through if you do it the way that I do. So if you'll see, right here we have the flames come out. We have a tile mark that I just click. Now, this flame comes out. I clicked there, right? With me clicking the moment the flames come out, these flames dissipate faster on floor 5. Meaning this is the exact tick I need to be moving. Once I click there, you'll see the flames go down. I start to run. I land. That's perfect. This first and second step that we just discussed can have room for error. This next part cannot. How I have clicked already on the right side of the screen over there, while the lightning has come down and the flames are out, it is all a timing thing. Can't really explain that to you too well, but uh, it is just a kind of a feel for it. If you tick this perfectly, you can run the entire obstacle and you can notice the safe spots of me skipping every two tiles are on the safe tiles through the lightning. Same with the flames, and I land perfectly. This next position, I click again to make sure that I'm uh, that I'm tick perfect within this obstacle. You get through it within about three clicks if you are tick perfect. Um, personally, <laughs> I don't think the term tick perfect is uh, too sweaty. Uh, just because it is like an overtime, you understand how the game works. Um, it's just it's just knowledge that you can eventually get behind if you do it too many times. Or too, uh, if you do it enough times, I should say. Uh, this next one, Blade came back. This one, you do have to make sure that you hit a portal. Uh, that second tier of portals that I just took. Um, if you don't, you're going to get hit. Uh, you can try to hit the third tier. Uh, which the third tier would be uh, just the third row of blue portals. Um, whenever the blade's coming back, you can absolutely take the second portal and just wait until it starts moving back towards you. You take whatever's in front of you. Usually I stay one to two tiles away. Super duper easy. Um, and then we're on to the final area of floor five. Um, this section can be kind of a nuisance, if you don't know how movement works. Um, just because I know a lot of people that will be watching this guide are probably not level 92 agility. Um, I'm going to try to keep all the explanations very uh, subtle, but not too explanatory. Um, the But you see I'm just navigating in between the lightning while I'm watching the arrows. Um, this section is you do have to focus on two things at once, which is going to be where the flame just originally was while the arrows are also coming at you. And then uh, navigating through the lightning and then using the two tile skip method whenever you are running uh, is super helpful. Just knowing that you won't get hit absolutely by anything. Uh, but definitely on this last part, take your time. Um, it's easier to understand whenever you have that two tile skipping in your head. Uh, I think I run this entire way. Yes. Yeah. So I run that entire way and I'm able to complete the entire room uh, while also just watching for the flames and watching for the arrows. Uh, the consistency is or the, the key to this minigame is always being moving, always be moving. If you stand still for too long on floor five or four, um, pretty much you'll be reset. Uh, it's not too crazy, but um, everything that I showed you is... Um, not necessarily a guide, it's just like tips that I would have for people that want to get into it. Um, I can't give you the exact reasoning behind my actions, but uh, just know that that was, you know, all I can really do. So, 
All right. Well, good luck to you. And thank you for watching again. If you like the video um, or anything along those lines, you know, leave a like, comment, whatever you want to do. Thank you all. Bye-bye.